Ten years from now, uh, probably the most likely career for me because I love to teach is that I'm hopefully going to be some kind of professor. I just really, really, really want to be married. I don't, I want to, I want to get married. Ten years from now, where do you think you'll be? Where would you like to be? I would love, honestly, to be, to travel around the world and intern with an ambassador um, or work for um, an embassy. I think that would be an experience beyond like anything. I want to be successful, and then I'm thinking about like I just don't want no like job, like no regular job. I want to be able to go to school so I can get a career. I'm 13th in my class of 650-something. President of the debate team. Vice President of the National Honor Society. President of the Jupiter Tequesta Junior Women's Club Juniorettes. This does absolutely nothing for my figure. Okay, got it. I'm second in my class, which made me salutatorian. I'm third chair in the Detroit Central Gentlemen's Club, and I was named Student Athlete of the Year this year. I'm ranked fifth in my class, so the GPA of 4.41. I took 13 AP classes and got a perfect score on my SATs. This is awkward. Oh, because I have it backwards. I'm not sure where that's supposed to start on the, it starts on the left. I rank fourth in our class. I like studying science and history. And I'm also the class treasurer. I got scholarship awards and honor roll awards. I play soccer and I write and produce my own music. I'm the vice president of the National Honor Society. I am running out of accomplishments that I can list easily. Please turn your tassels to the left. I now confer the diplomas to the class of 2007. It's a wrap! We are here! Like, I have all these pictures, because these are the oh, shit, shoot, I mean, mom's gonna yell at me. I, we can't fit all of it in the car, because it's all this, plus, like, there's a box out there, plus everything that's in there. Are you taking everything in that top, the tongue up there? Pretty much, yeah. Isn't this pretty? My mommy made it. It's a prayer blanket. I have shot glasses. I put them in the blanket. Is that a bad idea? I mean, you know, not that I'll drink, but... Allow us to just enjoy the day tomorrow and the celebration. My parents are pastors. 
I grew up going to church every Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As a pastor's kid, you're kind of not forced because my parents never forced any beliefs on me, but you're in an environment where you're like pushed to accept it. So I was always slower to accept it because I wanted to figure it out for myself than anybody telling me. I think I was voted most likely to succeed because people have seen my leadership ability in everything I do at high school because I'm in so many clubs and I'm, I have a reputation for going above and beyond. No one really knows how they want to leave their mark on the world. I mean, obviously, I want it to be in a positive way. I think it'd be nice if um, we had a female leader in the United States to promote um, peace for once. My name is Disco. And I'm black, <laughs> very black. Growing up in Detroit was uh, actually kind of rough. I was adopted. I was two. From what I hear, my birth dad's a chronic gambler and alcoholic, and my birth mom's still doing crack somewhere. When it comes to my adoptive parents, honestly, they are very nice people. But somehow, I always felt like an outsider. I always wanted attention, but I could never get it, so I'd act out. I used to get into fights. She used to cuss out the teachers, because I had a real short temper. Didn't want to listen to anybody until I started playing sports. Sports taught me discipline. He made me a strong person. I started doing better in school. I didn't have my temper problems anymore. You just straightened me up. I want to be an athletic trainer. My adoptive parents moved to Georgia for job reasons. They left me here in Detroit. But my best friend, Brian, and his mom took me in. We don't let nothing stop him. Like, he could have just gave up when his parents told him they got to move. He just decided he was find out a way to stay to graduate. Any other teenager probably wouldn't know what to do. You got a job, stay. He always been that way. He worked the hardest out of everybody. <laughs> On behalf of the Brothers of M11 is our annual scholarship awards dinner. It's our 25th. At this time, we'd like to have the introduction of the 2007 scholarship recipient, Charles Weider, who will be attending Central Michigan University. First person in my family to go to college. My parents didn't graduate from high school. There's nobody else in my family that's doing as good as me. So it just makes me want to do, do even better. With all the scholarships I got now, I'm covered for the first year of college. My car looks like my bag of cookies, my iPod, and all my stuff back there. All right. Success is not having a billion dollars. That's not success. That's having a billion dollars. When you stress free doing what you want to do and having fun, that's success. So I figured this out when I was in like third grade and I was so proud of myself. This cord goes around my light and what it would do is there's the end is over here by my bed. So when I was in bed falling asleep, I could read or whatever. And then if I just pull on this cord, light goes off. Growing up as a kid, I had no idea how to be a normal person.
I just wanted to be able to be a normal person and talk to people. So I guess I'm your average weird 13-year-old weirdo bum. Do you want to talk into the camera a little bit so that the people in the future can see what you look like? Thank you, that's very helpful. Is there anything else that you would like to have go on this tape? No. Okay, so we're signing off? Yeah, now go and leave me to my tension siege. <laughs> and I realized that I really did not have friends. So I thought, what is keeping me from being a normal person? So I got contacts and went on medication to get rid of my acne, and that was a good first step. And then I thought, what are people who are more confident, more social doing? I helped them with their homework in order to talk to them until I transformed my persona to be more social. are both professors. One of my friends said that in just two years of carpools, he's learned more than in most of his classes. My dad just talks about the most wild, unrelated stuff, but explains it very well. Dad? Can I put on contacts first? Do you remember the kindergarten During picture? Kindergarten picture. Was this the exact same picture? You need to carry some. At 18, you're just starting to kind of become self sufficient. You no longer have to ask your parents' permission for things. It's a lot to think about. Leaving our house will be getting stuck in the door. Grandma, do you um, want to get interviewed? A lot of, um, you know, I got most like to see. They had, they um, interviewing me. They doing a documentary, and they want to know if you want to get interviewed. I think my mama and my daddy grew up together, but I don't know. I don't be asking. I used to ask, but I don't ask no more. I have three sisters: Laquila, Tamira, Nikki. raised all of us by herself. Even though she didn't have money, she always made it necessary that we had what we needed and wanted. Well, not wanted all the time, but needed, basically. I love my baby. I'm proud of her. I always told her she could do it, no matter what. You know, I always tell her that. No matter what you, we go through, or the way we live, you can do it. She want to be a, what you want to be? Pediatrics, she want to deal with kids. I think she can do it. I think she can do it. I'll be going to Virginia State in the fall. Hopefully I like Virginia. I ain't never been nowhere, so I want to know. Nobody in our family went to college. I think it is a change, finally, for somebody to go to college. I'm going with her. I ain't gonna let her go that easy. I'm going with her. She go to Virginia, I'm going to. The longest I have been away from my mom was like eight days. And that's when I went to camp in ninth grade. You know, she can bring a report card home. Or it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing because, you know, if you look around us, you know, that's the thing that scares a lot of, you know, the kids that's here, but she just, just keep pushing. I want the best for myself, and I want to help my mom out. Like, when I get older, I want to be able to help her out so she won't have to struggle with anything.
Oh, how beautiful. As an 18-year-old in America, I think there's a lot of challenges that we're presented with. There's a very distinct bubble of advertising and certain social standards you have to live up to. The coach purse, the Prada bag, the designers especially. A lot of emphasis is placed on how you look. See, you know I still need a full-length mirror though, right? And we're pretty telling we're going to put this on the back of the door. Or on one of the sides. Mom, come on. I'm already ready. Shoot. Shoot. I have an issue. I only brought four pairs of jeans. This is so weird. It's still not like reality. We have all this like access to information from the internet now. Archives from hundreds of years ago, quotes, all this knowledge. But what most people use the internet for is MySpace and um, video blogging and playing video games. Our parents, they just want us to have more than they had. But by doing that, it's like we expect to have more than they had, I suppose. Especially in like the technocentric world, you want the iPod, your own computer. I mean, it's kind of difficult not to live in that society now. This is the main living room area. This is where everybody come kicking. We watch movies every night. Tonight we're gonna go out and watch a movie. This is the bathroom. Got one small bathroom, four guys. This is the bedroom. This right here is Zach. We call we, we gonna call this Zach because this is what he does. Yeah, that's Zach. This is my little area right here. That's my stuff up there. A lot of things just not appealing to me. Like, I see drunk people, I see high people all the time. I'm like, that's, that's not cool. You're making a fool of yourself. <laughs> I don't want to do that. You didn't drink when you were in high school? Nope. Do you now? Nope. Do people party here? All the time. Like, tonight is the biggest party night. There is that. Oh, wait, is that a video camera? <laughs> Where are y'all going? For the movie? Four. Four. We're going upstairs to see what time they're leaving. They're leaving, and then we're coming back. Oh. Promise. The one Kylie, we got everything in common. Like, my birthday the same, we like the same things. I call her my wife, and she calls me her husband because we say we soulmates. Do you think Kylie has a crush on you? It's pretty obvious to me, pretty bad. Have you guys ever hooked up? Mm -hmm. I like their breakfast. If I wake up early enough to get it, breakfast stops like at 30. When did you decide you weren't going to college in Virginia? I tried to get this loan. I couldn't get it. Because financially, I didn't pay for everything. I was mad. So I went to Eastern Michigan instead because it was cheaper. I don't have no books in none of my classes. Didn't that book cost like $100? It's all the $120. Those are so expensive. I'm glad I didn't go that far, though. I've been missing my mama. She had two mild heart attacks. They got her on a whole bunch of different medicines now. She had to stop smoking. But she had to stop smoking when she had, after she had the first one and she had another one, so... I don't know. I got a job working at preschool. I'll be lonely. This is the longest I ever been away from home.
<laughs> All right, this is the instruments part. Uh, we, we, we have a lot of instruments, because I don't really know what to do with my money, so I end up buying instruments with it. I worked this summer. I taught kids to make video games, and it was a really cool job, and I liked it. All right, here's my room. So, it's, it's kind of a walk-through room here. Once you close the curtain, it's, it's a hallway, and then you have my single. Kitchen, voila. What are you making here? Anything from uh, rice and tofu to delicious fettuccine alfredo with shrimp and mushrooms and some bruschetta to go along with it. Lots of stuff. This is just embarrassing, but I can't say it's abnormal. All right, these are all four letters. Trendy like a Spice Girl. Hosh? Peter Hayes. Hosh, yeah. Hayes, H-A-Y-S. Yes. Mm. You still don't believe, you don't believe. One time I asked yeah. a room full of six cool girls, I made them close his eyes. She made me close my eyes. If they thought he was attractive and everyone raised their hands. It, it, it's unfortunate though, because he is attractive. And then it's like, it's Peter Hayes. <laughs> me and Lauren have an interesting relationship. Lauren treats me as if I'm like a little brother that she's taken to hang out with her college friends for the first time. Oh, look at Peter, so lost in this new big world. He doesn't understand what's going on. Totally doesn't take me seriously. But then on the other hand, seems to like me. It's this weird contrast. Let me get your perspective on this. Is it, is it, like, is it like that I'm just weird, or is it like that I'm at a regular phase of development just several years behind? Very simple. You see a pretty boy like this who's smart and stuff, and you're like, why aren't the girls all over? You can tell he obviously had a pizza face in high school. No one talked to him, like, stunted his, like... Oh, I'm talking I mean, you just can't. <laughs> like, look at him. <laughs> like, he just has this, like, pretty... Yeah, no, he has this pretty boy body and, like, no confidence. Like, doesn't ever go up to girls. When he does, he gets rejected because he's like, no, I'm Peter. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, you're like, it doesn't fit, but it, I've seen this happen with a few boys, and they all were really ugly in middle and high school, and, like, people make fun of them, and they never get over it. So I've been There's an element of truth to what she's saying, that in a lot of respects, I'm totally, like, undeveloped. I really didn't have a social life until the middle of high school. He'll be okay once we leave Brown. So you just think that it's just going to be like, oh, look, a guy with an Ivy League degree. Yeah. Everything will be all right? Hopefully for you. That's a ridiculously prestigious private high school that I taught intro to econ at last semester. And I like teaching, it was good. So after college, do you plan on teaching? I don't know. I'm really not secure about anything. Hey, hey. Did you clean up? Yeah, it's always just clean. A group of guys is clean, I know. How many nights a week do you drink? Uh, I try to keep it at least once, maybe twice if it's a good week. How do you get alcohol? I'm not at liberty to discuss that with you. When I came here, I major was athletic training, but it was a very competitive program, and you had to be like the top of the top of the top. I didn't want my college experience to be all about that, so I changed my major to computer science for a while. I was gung-ho about that, but thinking about it, that's not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I thought about physical education. Teaching kids is a good thing to do. So then I um, changed my major to physical education because I was pretty sure about it. The only thing about this is I'm gonna be watched under a really fine microscope, so I gotta keep my partying and stuff to a minimal so I don't get in any trouble or anything. 
that's why I choose, if I'm going to drink heavily, I just do it here. I'd rather do it here in the comfort of in my room where I can just lay down if I need to. Yellow. Hey, babe. Hey, baby. What time do you want to do dinner? Are you hungry? You just want to come over? Yeah. All right, I'll see you in a second. All right. All right, I love you. Love you, too. Wait, there's one miss. Yeah, I ate it yesterday. With what? <laughs> I had a sandwich. I mean, Kylie, we actually signed a lease for an apartment next year. Do you guys pretty much live together now? Yep. <laughs> this is from Kylie. I got it on our one year anniversary. She's like my best friend. We basically attached at the hip. I even asked her to marry me one day. Totally joking around, but I was totally serious at the same time. What was the turning point when you guys became more than friends? Well, <laughs> when I kissed him, because I had to kiss him, because he was too much of a chicken to kiss me. What had happened was, <laughs> I was, I was, I was, trying to take my time oh, yeah. and get to know her first before I went in for that type of thing. You know, I ain't know she was gonna hit me or nothing if I tried to kiss her. <laughs> her parents love me. Yeah. They actually asked me to live with them. Kylie said, my mom wants to talk to you. I was just, me and Jim, we'd really enjoy it if you would just make our home your home. I almost started to cry. I was like, okay, all right, most definitely. Do you guys ever think that your relationship is too serious for the age that you are? No. Not really. We're not serious people. Not really. <laughs> I told you, I'm a goofball. She's just as big as a goofball as me, so. Mm. I'm not serious at all. Not in my opinion. No. I mean, it's serious as far as, like, our commitment, but we don't really take it that seriously, like... The normal rules of relationships, but... in the Middle East, I had so many eye-opening experiences. When you're surrounded by such intoxicating cultures, you have Judaism and all these amazing rituals and lots of wine and food and fun and friends. And then you're surrounded by Islam as well. Like, it is what defines their life. I was rooming with two Israelis who were both Jewish, and next door were Arabs. The way that they viewed each other it was so disheartening to me, which is, I think, why I was so intrigued and why now I'm like focusing my studies on religion in the Middle East and conflict resolution is because these people define their lives by their religion. I don't want to be a Christian because I was brought up Christian and my parents are pastors. I want to be a Christian because I know why I believe what I believe. I want to know why I'm not a Jew, why I'm not a Muslim, why I'm not a Buddhist. And I want to experience every religion because religion is such a big part of how people do define themselves. Good morning, love. Um, I'm hoping you are on your way. Spring break is beginning, and we are going to have a lot of fun, OK? Hi, Hi Boo Bear. Hey, Hair, it's so short. It looks good. Smiley face. Hi. We put on a good song. Listen, I like John Mayer. Yeah, but we're, no one's jamming there. Right. The jamming isn't happening. We went to the Alternative Club last night in downtown Gainesville, and I got stared yeah, down. Yeah, I got... I've never felt so judged in my life. 
I yeah. just really hate judging people. I'm really, really trying to work on it in my life. Me too. Well, this Brady's is here. our spring break. Like, I want to jam. It's all good, man. A little bit of Monica in my life. My A little bit of Erica by my side. A little bit of Rita's all I need. A little bit of Tina's what I see. A little bit of Jessica, here I am. A little bit of you makes me your man. <laughs> we are home! My baby! Family! Hi! I miss you guys so much. My baby's girl! Sissy! <laughs> okay, so the, yeah, this is my room. It's ugly now. Yes! Zen, I'm home now. I feel like we should climb up. <laughs> How beautiful is this day? Like, seriously, can we be any luckier? Yo, mama said shut the door. Well, I mean, tell Nina I'll be right back. Tell Nina to come say hi. Tommy. Tommy, shut the door. I'll be right back. What's your major now? Nursing, but our minor is childhood education. Because that nursing program is so hard. <laughs> the program is so hard to me. I want to do both. So work with kids and in the medical field. Queer, I heard you have a boyfriend. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> do you, Quay? Do I got a boyfriend? No. You got a boo? Yeah, I got a boo. What's up? <laughs> it's the difference. That's just my hangout party. We go out to eat. We do everything that boyfriends and girlfriends do, but we not boyfriend. <laughs> so I ain't your boyfriend. <laughs> he ain't my boyfriend. <laughs> Uh, uh, probably in this hour. Interest rate and roll everything into one affordable monthly payment. Listen, you can get debt-free a lot faster than you think. You might as well get that one. Ain't that one $6.75? I don't use that. Why? That's not what I use. I use it for 6 dollars how much is the game, nigga? I pay seventeen. You can get that for six dollars. Then you might as well wash your clothes in nothing. Do you think you would come back to Detroit after graduation? No. I think it's got worse here. People be robbing people for nothing. Like if I ain't got no gas, like at nighttime, I don't get no gas. <laughs> hey, Grandma. Hi. Oh, Jesus. Nine nah, eleven. It was just like a whole bunch of people just getting killed. I think we found like four bodies around the corner from my grandma's house. I think that was crazy and scary. It make you not want to be around the neighborhood like that. They very addictive heard. because when I got my first one, I was ready to go. It used to be fun when we was little. As we get older, there's nothing else for us to do. We realize that there's other stuff out there and other places that you might want to be. I'm gonna go to Paris. Let's see how that is. Well, I do. That's Donovan. This little baby she got. My sister friend, baby, Donovan. She let my mama have him. She's so cute. I call him poo poo. Hell, yeah, poo poo face. They didn't have any gas or water. So when she was pregnant, I told her that I would take the baby when she had the baby. And I had the baby ever since. So she may just give them to me. I got to really think about it. You know, my health being bad, it's not going to be easy raising a kid all over again. My mom just had another heart attack, and she really can't eat anything. It sucks. 
It's just crazy how you can't get health insurance. She couldn't get her prescriptions. Do you want to go to clean it up? Her candy shell. <laughs> she wanted to open a candy store. Yeah, a long time ago. Uh, where you get from? Out of uh, Target magazine. I'm going to keep adding every time I see something. I just got to find my Mike and Ike's and hot tamales, the big boxes like that. I just thought it was different. Mm -hmm. What's it been like since Quay started college? It's been all right. I just miss her. But she come home every weekend. She, she doing pretty good. She doing pretty good so far. I just miss her. Did I have to fix Lionel a plate too? Probably not. Here you go. All right, mommy. All right. All right, mom. I'll be back. Okay, baby. Yep. Evan, Christine, Christine, Evan, you guys have heard about each other but haven't actually met. I was sitting in the lobby of Barrison Hall today mm -hmm. doing my like science -y homework. Okay. This is the couple who stayed and together until then, yes, for that. The um, and they took away my Do you know how intimidating that is? Yes, but can they conceive of how brains work? Christine is the first person that I actually liked a lot before we even had anything going. We just had this connection. I don't know, she's just really interesting. We kind of share a mode of thought, but aren't so similar that it feels like I'm talking to a clone of myself or anything. I'm realizing my own ignorance about a lot of things, especially relating to other people that I didn't really know that I didn't know. See, so yeah, I can do the math. It takes about eight, nine hours to get to LA. I had this kind of super rational attitude towards things. And it slowly dawned on me that most other people don't actually work this way, that a lot of the times people are totally irrational. I'm kind of trying to adjust, trying to figure out how all of this actually works. here for about a month. I've only been living here for the last day or two because the fight with Christine not staying at her place. But I usually basically just live at her place. Why did you guys get a fight? Issues coming to a head over my weird sense of emotions and that she felt like I was not really attached to her in certain ways that you usually expect a boyfriend or girlfriend to be, that a lot of things were very, ca seemingly very casual, which to me, I feel really, like, really attracted to her and really into her and more than anyone I've ever been with. But I'm kind of weird and don't always show it in the right ways. I want to say that I'm in love, but what our argument now and then has been about is just that I guess either I'm missing certain feelings or something. I wish I felt emotions more strongly because I feel like that they're part of what gives life spark and meaning. When I brought up my kind of feelings and social issues with my parents, I have talked to them about it. 
And I said, you know, I think I might be a little bit autistic or whatever. And they're like, yeah, we all are. Lucky them if two people who are weirdly oblivious with other people's feelings have found each other and stay happy with each other. But I'm not sure if that's what I want. What do you think you want? I really don't know. Some balance between that and the fiery storm of other adolescent and college relationships around me. Um, I don't know. I'm really not sure how my future is going to work out. This is part of being a college kid. Oh, I can't wait till I'm a real person and I can buy real things. I don't know, I did that for two years. You know, the whole college get drunk thing. <laughs> fun, don't get me wrong, but college is the separator between being a kid and being an adult. But my mom and dad still paid for my tuition and my housing, you know, like, they helped a lot. I wasn't one of the kids who had to support themselves through college. I was really lucky. So this is it. Like, you know, I have to make my own money. I have to find my own place. I have to buy my own toilet paper. And, you know, those little things that you don't think about. Add water, sugar, lemon juice. Great. Where does the, oh, okay. Two and a half cups of sugar. I am making knafe, my favorite Ramadan dessert. I don't consider myself particularly religious. Faith isn't easy. It's a leap for a reason. But Judaism, it's like the only religion that I just got. Like, it was very grounding and I felt connected. I still do a Shabbat prayer on Fridays at sunset. I was really scared to tell my mom because obviously my parents are pastors and it's kind of a big deal. And they were so supportive. My mom's like, you know, if that's what you believe, like, we can still celebrate together and you can teach us stuff. Wait, how long am I supposed to keep it in for? Oh, I'm not like cooking to five minutes. I'm just like, okay. When you're in high school, you only think about the known professions. Doctor, lawyer, CEO, the big ones. Then in college, you're like, wow, there are so many more options. I didn't even really figure out my focus until my junior year, and I was abroad studying languages. How am I supposed to decide what I'm supposed to do for the rest of my life, which I think is a ridiculous principle anyways. College definitely challenged me. None of my other friends studied abroad five times, or have pictures on the pyramids, or climbed Mount Sinai twice, or spent Thanksgiving in Turkey. Turkey Day in Turkey, I thought that was great. I'm really happy which is why I'm so scared to graduate. <sighs> but it'll be great, right? Yeah. Uh, I guess I can't put this on with a tie on. Is that how people put shirts on? No, I just wanted to get ready for last night. I got Phi Beta Kappa and graduated Magna Cum Laude. I kind of assumed that I would get it, but it was just nice to see. Of course, then I started looking at the bad. I started looking at the list a lot and then seeing kids with, you know, like three symbols next to their name or like better symbols than my symbols and then feeling bad. And it always need to have that back in perspective. It's like, no, you did do well. Zipper in the front? Yeah. Weird. My only occupation since I was a conscious being is a student. I'm now not going to be a student for the rest of my life. Kind of weird. Peter Hayes. It feels awesome to be graduating from college. I mean, I'm the first one to do it in my family, so this is a pretty big deal for me. I 
can't imagine a more growing experience in my life than what I've had in these four years. The late night study sessions, all my adventures around the world, the relationships. My parents make comments to suggest that I could be trying harder. I'm just afraid that I'll take a job that's not really satisfying and then just kind of be too scared to take any risks to try to do anything good. And I'm afraid of ruts. Kylie and her family were a huge support system for me. I honestly don't think I would have made it through college without them. so cocky in high school <laughs> and probably extremely insecure at the same time. I can't imagine it getting any better than this. Hey Pamela, this is Clay. I just wanted to call and let you know that I'm not going to graduate in May. Um, my mom is actually in the hospital and I'm really worried about her. I got a job right out of school as a personal trainer, and I was excited about it at first, and having to almost trick people into buying training, I just went against everything I, I'm about, so I didn't want to do it anymore. Right now, the company I work for gives title insurance and home appraisals. It's 10 hours a day, and it's pretty mundane, but I'm going to make some money, pay some bills. I miss my other car like crazy. Most comfortable car I ever had. That was the only other car I ever had. I wrecked it. Drove into a F-250. I was drinking and driving. Nothing I thought was gonna make me black out and get in my car. Didn't even know where I was going. Last thing I remember was getting ready to go to bed. Then I woke up in the car with the airbags deployed. Worst night of my life. I had a real tough moment deciding if I should run or not. But I didn't. I 
felt too ashamed of myself. I called Kylie because that's the only number I know by heart. There was a strain on the relationship, and she said that she felt like she was a mother. She didn't want a son. <laughs> anyway, so we decided to take some time to figure out what we wanted and what we, uh, and how we were gonna grow and stuff. Hi, this is Charles Ryder. I'm scheduled for an arraignment at 8.30. Snow is really delaying my progress. Okay, thank you. First time I've ever been put in, in jail, period. Let me know what I gotta do to make this right, and I'll do it. New Year's Eve. I've been talking to Kylie all night, and she's been pretty sad. Her friends who were supposed to be coming over didn't, so she's at home by herself. And I figure since I'm here by myself and I'm not doing anything and no one needs my ride, needs a ride or anything tonight, <clears throat> why not go and surprise my good friend Kylie? It's an hour and a half away, but I think it's worth it so she doesn't have to be alone. I made it back home, and all in all, that was a pretty amazing trip. I went over there on a feeling, and it turns out she's feeling the same way I did. I don't know, but I'm quite sure now that Kylie's the only girl for me. I tell you, man, if you don't believe in anything, you gotta believe in fate. Fate doesn't lie to you. I love that girl. Uh, last night I didn't really sleep well. I slept at Kylie's. Oh, oh dear readers, I'm stepping my game up. Yeah, I slept at Kylie's and uh, yeah, that was awesome. Looks like things are finally getting back on track. interesting. There's so much you don't know, and what you do know, you don't even really know that well. It's really humbling. Whenever I tell people, say I'm pursuing a double master's in Middle East studies and global policy, everyone's response is, huh, like, across the board. What's your assignment today? Today, I will be crafting a policy memo giving President Obama options about how to pursue the crisis in Crimea. Putin just stole Crimea. And it's only your opinion? Mm-hmm. I mean, I have to use existing evidence on like what actions have already been taken, what actions are viable to take. I can't like propose nuclear war. How many languages do you speak now? Hebrew, Arabic, Turkish. I fell in love with Turkey. I wanted to study the Quran, but I had to kind of prove myself, so I went every week to the mosque. I think I could take parts of each religion <laughs> and practice them. I have the Quran next to the book on Judaism, next to the Bible. <laughs> like, 
I think there's something beautiful about all of them, and I think they all have really amazing morals and stories to tell. I knew when I started pursuing Middle East studies that it wasn't going to be like quote unquote easy for me to like find a guy who would want to travel with me all over the world. I'm not the kind of girl who will follow a man because I'm supposed to. Jake's not like that. Jake and I have been dating for six months. He has really strong values and does not compromise on them. And and I really love that about him. Mm. Yeah, they're good. So is this Paris. I found the other day one of my old journals and I had written, find what I believe in and practice it actively. You always hope that you're that person who would stand up against the Nazis, right? And you would be the one hiding Jews, or you would be the one fighting alongside Martin Luther King, and you would be the one practicing civil disobedience. Like, you always hope for the best in yourself. Make the world a little bit of a better place. You think it's possible? Yes. How long? It'll take several generations, but if you never start, nothing will ever happen. It'll be three years and doesn't feel like it. Yeah, I miss her a lot. I was a wreck, it was a nice wreck. And people always say, it'll get better. To me, it gets worse. She had open heart surgery and then she came home. When she lay all flat down, she said that she felt pain on her chest, so she said we had to prop her up. She passed away in the house. My mom passed away in November, and then my cousin passed away in December. My sister passed away in January. February, it was my mom's best friend. March, my sister, her fiance, got killed. I wasn't eating. I stopped going to school. I quit my job. I just cut everybody off. I kept it to myself. I didn't want to talk. Hey, Grandma. Hey, lady. How are you feeling? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. My knees. There's another one down there. I like this one, too. I dream about her all the time. It just feels so real. My mom was very outspoken. We was the complete opposite. Like, if I have a child, I think my child is going to be loud and outgoing. Complete opposite of me. I think I would make a great mom one day. After my mom passed away, Aquila got custody of Donovan. I still call him Poo Poo, even though he's five. I feel like I'm more on track now. I started going back to school. I started back working, but <laughs> I don't have a career. I haven't traveled. I just expect them to have done more. A lot of stuff didn't go as I thought it would, but I guess that's life. It's crazy. How was the proposal? <laughs> he dressed up as a penguin. And draped the whole living room in sheets. And we had just started watching Dexter, so I thought I was gonna get murdered. He had March of the Penguins playing in the background. Since penguins mate for life, and they give their mate a pebble, so he kind of thought the engagement ring was kind of like the pebble. So really it was really cute. When we do start having kids, we want to move closer to family. 
they're pretty much my family, our family. Thank you guys. I really appreciate you guys stepping in for me and helping represent me up there. And I just really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. We'll see you. Guys, get Mayor! Yeah, buddy! He's getting Mayor! Mayor! Soak it all up, man, because it's going to fly by quicker than you think. I just want to get, like, this part over with because I'm going to be a puddle. I'm not even packing clean us because I'm going to be good. You know, I think you should put some in there, Lori. <laughs> don't even do that. I know. Days a long time. I may have to, I may have to change all my plans. Yep. What is your last name gonna be today? Ryder. Ryder. Yes. Ryder. This is what make you a man. Okay, it's time. <laughs> My life is complete. <laughs> Here's my little seat. Uh, due to some occasional back problems, I have ditched backed chairs for this uh, high-tech stool. Um, it seems to be working all right. It was almost like a chance happening that one other teacher who was teaching in China, and he was just like, well, if you like programming, why don't you look into one of these new coding boot camps? We're an app, right? Pastojo is a tool to help teachers manage good behavior in their kids, and it's like wildly popular among elementary school teachers. So you need software engineers to do all the coding. So that is what I do. I am a software engineer. Everyone is super smart. I learned a huge amount. It taught me the value of hard work. China was kind of a wake-up call that it's just like, now you're in adult life. There's no one holding your hand or telling you what to do. And that's kind of cliche, but like, it's one of those things you kind of have to learn sometime or other. Throughout high school and college, I was very good at following a path when someone told me what to do. How could things not be okay if you're getting A's at an Ivy League school, when in fact things weren't okay because I wasn't actually doing anything that would lead to a future? I just had to think really hard about what was I gonna do with my life, instead of just assuming that by getting your good degree that that would just guarantee life. Do you know Peter has a girlfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? This has been known by anyone in the office who was just straightforward Nobody, enough to ask. Did you meet her on Twitter? <laughs> no, no, okay, keep it. Wait, how long have you been dating this girl? Four yeah. months. Four months? <laughs> you haven't said a word about her. How serious is it? What does that question mean? <laughs> I mean, we don't live together, but like, like she stays over a lot of the nights, and I don't know, we've been together four months. That's why you've been coming a little later the last four months, maybe. <laughs> the adult responsibilities are slowly accumulating. I have credit cards now. I have my own insurance. But I don't think I have flipped the switch where I think of myself as fully adult or anything. My friend Alex actually has a good one. She's like, what are the things when you have them, you will be officially an adult? One of hers is a Roomba. 
I don't have a Roomba. Yeah, I can just pick it up and then we can ride it all. And that'd be fun. Can we we each, could? Well, we each I get our... I No, we wouldn't fit together. Are you looking for any herbs or anything? Herbs? I don't know. What else do you put in food? Garlic? You say so. Just two breasts is probably okay. <laughs> okay, uh, what do we want to do? It was true in Brown. It's definitely true in Silicon Valley. There's a lot of people whose dream is to like be the number one in the world. I'm not saying that I don't have goals or want to achieve things, but I think most of my ambitions are like more comfort related, that I want to lead a happy and fulfilling life more than I want to like build a great empire. You know what I mean? I wanted to come to DC. It was this weird heart pull. I felt like it was my city, but this year has felt like just a lot of struggle slash growth slash fighting to be noticed in the city. The first question that anybody asks you in DC is, what do you do? And if you don't do something important or you can't help them, they're like, okay, good night. And it's, I kind of just wanted to be like, congratulations on your job title, but your personality kind of sucks. Shalom, she's so beautiful. Manishma. Time flies. We are grown ups. We're grown ups. Well, this is my baby. I have my baby right here. <laughs> I really want to come visit you in Israel, but honestly, I don't know if they're going to let me in. They ask, like, yesh lecha mishpacha be'ad? And I'm like, mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. I applied for a ton of positions. I had lots of interviews. A couple I was, they told me I was overqualified for. Bye. Shabbat shalom. Bye-bye. So I became the manager of Conflict Location Event Data Project, which is a very long name. But essentially what we do is we track political violence in Africa and South and Southeast Asia. I would be lying if I said that other people's perceptions did not influence my perception of a success as an adult. I think there's always an element of wanting to be impressive. Nobody hopes that people think they're mediocre, you know, like, yeah, she's decent. Nobody really wants that. I thought I would marry Jake. I was, I think, the only person I ever really thought, like, this is it. But Jake has to grow up. That was a really tough time. So I cried a lot. What did you do to get through that breakup? <laughs> uh, I went to South Asia. <laughs> I spent two months backpacking by myself. The biggest lesson I took was just being okay being by yourself. I don't need my phone. I don't need cute clothes to feel happy in this place that I'm in, I'm just happy. I just, um... there's something missing with uh, me and Kylie. Um... <clears throat> she, she just, it, it just, it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't a, somebody did something terrible. I had doubts ever since we set the date. 
I was nervous, I was scared, and I was thinking, this is a big thing that's happening. You'll get over it, you'll get over it, you'll get over it, you'll get over it. But I never got over it. I don't really think I was truly in love. Those weren't feelings I was having, and I started to get depressed and feel terrible because I felt like I was stringing her along. I was just really, really confused. I couldn't get over those doubts. There was one time where there's a really big storm here in Michigan, and Kylie nearly drowned. She got swooped up in an underpass. But someone picked her up and took her to a gas station. But I saw this lady who was stuck on the side of the road, so I started helping other people. And Kylie chewed me out. She was extremely upset that I left her to go help other people. I got really upset, and I was like, do you hate that I'm that nice to people? And she said, yes, I hate that you're that nice to people. I haven't really been able to recover from that. Leaving Kylie was a hard thing to do, but I knew it was the right thing to do. I didn't want to wake up at 40 and have kids and resent every part of being with her and leave then. At that point, I thought everybody in her family hated me. I'm sure they felt like I left them, too, especially Kylie's mom, because she practically took claim of me and brought me in. I didn't experience it. Right. And then I moved in, and I'm like, damn. I'm like, that's a lot. I can't do this. I was like, this lady fooled me. Because <laughs> she told me you can't really hear them. Meeting James was a blessing. He's very caring, supportive, and I'm finally in a relationship where I say I'm, like, completely happy. This is what love's supposed to feel like. Officially since February 14th. Well, it's easy to remember. <laughs> Do you miss Detroit? No. Paul Bridge is so quiet. I like the quiet. That's why I chose that city. Uh, I want to teach. I'm thinking kindergarten to first grade. The educational system, I don't think that we learned as much as we should have been learning. So even like me sometimes now, I'm like, where did you learn this from? Like, oh, they taught us this in high school. I'm like, oh, we didn't learn that in high school. I read an article and said, still separate, still unequal. And it's about the school systems, how poor schools are not learning um, the same things that other schools are learning and how it's not, resources are not put in those schools and you don't have even books. Kids don't even have books in Detroit for the schools. I think that people look at me and assume that I don't know certain things and judge me based on just because I'm black. I'd rather just, in my own way, like, prove them wrong. I'm excited to see my grandmother. She first gonna say, like, where did you get this white guy from? Or something like that. Which is normal with being, what, how old is she? about to be 88. In her head, this is new to her. Like, oh, this is good, the whites and the blacks getting together. Like, yeah, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs>
Drive with the legs, Peter. Push, push, push. Hold it. Down, down. All right. Yeah. Good. 81. 81 is running. running. I picked up weightlifting about nine months ago. When I started dating Lexi, she had been really interested in Olympic lifting. It's really awesome to train something where it's all on you to get this one or these two moves really down. How do you feel? What do you mean? Happy. <laughs> uh -huh. Sad. A little happy. Kind of like how I feel after anything. A little happy, a little sad. <laughs> just, everything's nice. Just, just no, no, not a little sad. Not a little sad, okay. But you made all of your lists. That's yeah. so cool. So here, I can airdrop these to you. Oh yeah? Although or I just... also want to make a post. Mm, tough. Are you going to share yours on Facebook too? Yeah, why not? Okay, cool. Lexi, she's an engineer too. She's really also into consciously making herself better, but without being self-aggrandizing about it. Are you in love with her? Yeah. You guys are serious. I mean, what's serious? Not talking about marriage, we're talking about moving in together. I think there's several steps before we talk about getting married. realization that like kind of hit me when I was traveling a couple months ago and I was just talking to some random people in the hostel and there was this like overwhelming realization of like I'm just coming across as a relatively normal person and like that's like such a silly struggle to have or whatever but like that I don't know that meant something to me have to practice that in a bit I just feel like, kind of, I guess kind of stupid too. I'm like, I gave up everything to just move down there. I'm like, oh, we're planning our life together. He's on the same page as me. I don't have to play no games. And then I'm just like, oh. Like, I don't know. And he told me that he don't like that I shut down when I'm mad. And he's like, I feel like you want to be married soon. I'm like, well, I, you know I want to be married. I said, like, we talked about that. And he was like, that's just a lot of pressure on me. But yesterday he didn't say anything about breaking up or or me moving out. But then today he's like, can you go? I told him, like, honestly, this probably would be permanent. I said, because I probably honestly will never trust you again as far as commitment type thing. I'm like, because I'm like, I'm not going to trust you. And I'm like, I'm, how I am, how I shut down when I'm pissed, I'm going to shut down I'm going to shut him off. It hurts a lot, but I'm like, I can't just stop and focus on that. Like, I got other stuff to do. I'm not thinking about a man first. I'm like, I got stuff to do. I want to graduate. Now I have three jobs. I work at Sally Beauty Supply as a cashier. I'm a home care aide. I also work as a community health care worker at the Dental Center of Northwest Ohio. This is Kadrella Lewis, a community health care worker. And I was calling just to confirm my visit that we have for tomorrow at 11 a.m. Okay. You have a great day. Our goal is to work with women to reduce infant mortality. So we try to get them set up with resources, like a family doctor. Um, if they need transportation to get to those visits, 
when they have their baby, making sure the babies have cribs, car seats, diapers, food. I love it so far. Well, I actually have a client in the hospital. And it's hard not to get attached to them because they're young. When I visit her, she was like, I'm glad you came over. And it was nice just to have someone to talk to. That was something I really liked. Just knowing that you can just help someone just by talking to them. So that makes me happy. I never thought that I'd make a career out of title insurance. But I'm so happy I'm in the position I'm in. I'm a team leader. The hardest thing I've ever done. Some days I'm overwhelmed. Title source, signing agent services, this is Charles. But then there's those days and I'm just like, I love what I do. Do you want to get married again? I do, eventually. My idea about what I want in my life has changed, though. I want peace of mind. Like, I've never had that. I've never had a lot of things. Like, I... I was definitely a people pleaser. All I lived to do was make my mom and dad proud, and then make my teachers proud, and then keep Kylie happy. Now I know that people pleasing only leads to feeling of low self-worth because no one's gonna put into you what you put into other people. So I'm like, well, shit, I'm so good at making everybody else happy. Why not do something to make me happy? Well, today I am introducing the 2017 Gamma Lambda Scholarship Award recipients. I got a scholarship out of high school, and they asked me if I'd come back and speak. I honestly feel thankful, because I have an opportunity to hopefully inspire. I used to walk home from school wondering if I'm going to get shot. I was always getting out of Detroit. Had I not been able to, though, I'd like to say I would have stayed away from the trouble, but. Trouble always seems to find me when I was in Detroit. A lot has happened. It all brought me to where I am today. And I like where I am today. For me, being black in America, I know that there's wild amounts of racism out there. I am very thankful that I've been able to surround myself with open-minded people who see me as a person first. How you doing, man? We have 21 young black men who are not going to jail, who are not going to die, who are not going to prison, but they are under the college. I'd like to bring forth a young man who was a 2007 scholarship recipient, Charles Ryder. I received this scholarship 10 years ago on this day, back in 2007. I've sat exactly where you all were sitting. You all are up here because you all have awesome potentials, right? So I want you to think of yourselves as candles. To take your fire and share what you have learned with others. Passing that fire on, you're able to light up a whole room. So you gotta give back, you gotta pay it forward. I'd like to present to you the 2017 I'm really happy here. And it surprised me. I've been moved here for newness and excitement, another adventure. What's this? 
This is lemon. Oh, that's a dried lemon. Yes, yeah, dried lemon. Oh. This is mint. This, mm. Yeah, this is good. This is for the mixed soup for the chicken. I was thinking chicken. It'd be good in the crock yeah. pot. Yes. <laughs> I love my job. It's really interesting. I work for a very large financial institution, but my job is to basically stop the bad guys from moving money around. We look at everything from financing of terrorism to money laundering, human trafficking. I want to be challenged. This job gives me that. I would love if I could be a part of bringing more women into leadership roles, not just in America, that women can be equal participants in high-level decisions and maybe be Secretary of State. <laughs> but don't put that in there because then it'll never happen. Yeah, it feels unreal. I can't believe I'm driving to graduation. like about time, but I'm so happy it's finally here. It feels a little um, unreal. It took a while, it was 10 years, <laughs> it's a long time. And it has not been easy at all getting here. I feel like maybe it was meant for me to take this alone because I feel like I have grown so much, I have matured. I am doing an after school program where I do tutoring and mentoring. So I'm going to teach first grade. So I'm just gonna find you your sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me and James, so we're back together now. I'm just so glad that right, I met him and he's a part of my life because he makes me so happy. I was so nervous, I don't know why. Well, my palms was wet. It's finally done. Graduates go around in front. Graduates go around in front. Please welcome the graduating class of Eastern Michigan. I think that the American dream is possible, but it's most definitely be a hard thing to obtain. You just gotta work your butt off. And why is it important you have a passport? Just so I can travel. Okay. Alright. I just need your ID and your birth certificate. So if you can raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the statements on your application are true and complete to the best of your knowledge and the photo attached is a true likeness of yourself? I do. Okay. And then you'll sign the top line with your legal signature. I do feel proud of myself, but sometimes I get down on myself because I haven't achieved as much as I thought I would at this point. Something that I learned in life was just keep pushing forward and never give up. I would not have guessed 10 years ago that I would have lived on four continents by the time I was 25 years old. I have had so many amazing experiences traveled to almost 30 countries. I've gotten to learn languages and been blown out of any comfort zone that I ever existed in before. Success for me is inextricably linked to being challenged in work, in love, personally, spiritually. There's something about the constant striving that makes me feel successful. Came from a broken place. I had a lot of issues growing up. I chose to wake up one day and chose to say, hey, I'm better than this. 
I had a plan. The plan kept changing, but I always worked towards being successful and setting myself up to where I am in the position that I am now. I feel like you can't truly say you're successful if you're not happy. You can have all the money and riches and, and houses and stuff, but if you're not happy with any of that, then you can't say you're successful. I feel like I have been incredibly lucky to have had opportunities just like almost handed to me. I'm not sure what I said when I was 18, but it is hard to imagine I was particularly aware of my privilege when I was 18. Coming from a nice, loving family with a decent amount of economic success is just such a gift. I was able to go to college without taking on a huge amount of debt. I had health insurance. I think it was easy as a teenager to almost think like other people were somehow defective because they didn't have those. And that's like a really fucked up way to think, right? You don't know all the stuff that they had to overcome that for you is just given to you. I have relatively wide liberty to do what I want in life. But I still feel like I am mostly interested in success on a personal level and not really in regards to like my position in society. For me, success is a life where I'm always surrounded by people who I love and people who love me. Well, I started out down a dirty road. Started out all alone. It's a wrap! We got it! And the sun went down as across the hill. And the town lit up. The world got still I'm learning to fly But I ain't got wings Coming down Is the hardest thing Well, the good old days May not return Rocks might melt and the sea may burn. I'm learning to fly, but I ain't got wings. Coming down is the hardest thing. Started out for God knows where. I guess I'll know when I get there. I'm learning to fly around the clouds. But what goes up must come down. Is 
the highest thing I'm learning to fly